curious how you think this alters the balance of power uh, here at home as we watch a lot of the carnage that's played out uh, since those U.S. troops have left. President Trump has got a political crisis in Washington. He doesn't have a political crisis with his base. Uh, most of the base voters are actually happy at the idea of ending endless wars. So this is a D.C. problem for President Trump. What he's trying to do is to get ahead of Congress by putting out some sanctions now, sanctions which have symbolic value, but which also buy him some time to get ahead of the sanctions train in Congress and possibly slow things down before they start getting to the nuclear level of sanctions weapons, which would be major sanctions on the Turkish financial sector. Sure. Ryan, what concern should we have about where this leaves Turkey in terms of its uh, alliance with the U.S., its involvement with NATO, uh, its ties with Russia? Uh, explain to us the, the different ways this could play out now. Well, obviously, the uh, the Russians are moving to exploit this rift as much as they possibly can. Uh, that being said, there's limits to how much the Russians can replace the Americans or or build on this uh, this momentum, this rift between the two. At the end of the day, Turkey and the United States still do need one another. Uh, Turkey is still an important member of the NATO alliance. Uh, but that being said, there's plenty of gradients of tension that the two of them can play out against one another, especially in the economic and diplomatic realms. Uh, arms transfers and arms deals are also another place that this can play out. Uh, Turkey and the United States don't want to break up, uh, but at the same time, Turkey is no longer viewing the NATO alliance as central to its security. It's looking for backup options. And uh, this entire Syrian Northeast crisis is part of the reason that their thinking has evolved to include other great power partners like the Russians. So the Russian influence is moving in the direction that Moscow wants, but there's only so far that they can go in the medium term. Mm -hmm. And so, James, you said this is creating a political crisis in D.C., uh, perhaps with the Republican leadership, but not with the base. Does that mean you think that the uh, senators and others need to come around to this new point of view that uh, seems to be providing support for the Republican Party, which is to say increasingly isolationist and that we need to focus here at home? Well, I wouldn't say that. I would say that Washington's perspective is that Trump is in dire trouble. The reality is he does have trouble with Congress, and he does have trouble with a lot of mainstream Republican voters. But his core supporters are still there, and that may give him staying power to get through this crisis as he's gotten through previous crises, such as his uh, threat to uh, tariff goods coming in from Mexico if Mexico did not restrain immigration. He's generally found a way in the past to buy back support from Congress. I think he's trying to do that. At this point, however, we've done this cycle so many times that sooner or later it's going to be very hard for Trump to bounce back. That's why it's important for him to demonstrate that he's willing to do something to preempt and front-run Congress to some degree and try to gain control of the situation before Congress takes all the power away from him.